the last scene from part one, we saw the cops giving Malik a break after Jameson told them who he was. When they let him go, Jameson introduced himself and told Malik that he'd be at tryouts tomorrow and wanted to know if Malik could throw him a couple of passes. But Malik told him that after today, he was retiring from playing football. At the Fury tryouts, the general made his way over to flirt with Tasha and to also talk business. He told her that if she can get Malik to be the quarterback, that he'd make her very, very rich. Tasha didn't hesitate to agree, and apparently the general is more involved with her personal life than what she'd want him to be. He gave her the number to his divorce lawyer and told her that she was going to need it. Outside of the stadium, we see Malik and Caleb, and Malik is a little pissed because Caleb took off running when he got stopped by the police. We make our way back into the tryouts, and Jameson is nervous and doing handstands right before he tries out for the team. And this is where he runs into foot-in-the-mouth Brittany again. She called his handstands weird even after he told her that it's homage to his mom. When she found out that his mom passed away while he was in prison, she had egg all over her face yet again. She invited him to Club 51 for drinks at a party that she's throwing so that she could make up for her big mouth. But Jameson declined due to all the things that's going on with the tryouts. And at the tryouts, we got fans and agents there to see who's gonna make the cut. Malik made his way onto the scene because he didn't wanna return the appearance fee that he had for the team. And he was throwing passes to Jamison the entire time. And Jamison was clearly the standout, but the fans didn't leave their signs at home, nor did the Colonel ignore the elephant in the room. The fan sign read, rapist go home, and they started to boo Jamison. Apparently, the Colonel wants to avoid negative press and the lack of fan support, so he chose another player to go to the furry football camp. Malik was upset and told Tasha that it's time to leave Vegas, and a disappointed Jameson left the field. Malik has his eyes wide open to the city and all of the Colonel's bullcrap, but all Tasha wants to do is get that check that the Colonel is promising her. We're at the party that Brittany's hosting and she's instructing the bottle girls to the table and we also see Garrett entering the party as well. And Brittany's every move is being clocked by the club manager. She's over there in the corner checking her out. Malik and Tasha are on her private plane going home and she's letting him know about all the contract offers that are on the table with Vegas being the largest one. Malik is still pressing towards retiring and he's letting her know that team ownership was really Caleb's idea. And now that he's passed away, he doesn't see the need to continue with reaching that goal. So here is where we find out that his friend Caleb is only living in his imagination. Tasha wants to know if he's hallucinating because she knows that he's under a whole lot of stress. And maybe this is where Tasha should ease up a little bit and not press him so hard for signing deals and playing ball again. But instead, she tells him that the way to honor Caleb is to continue with his plan to become team owner. Garrett makes it over to Brittany to sarcastically thank her for firing his party planner. He tried to be hard-nosed about it at first, but he broke her off a bag and kept partying. And we find out here that Raquel wanna sop Garrett up with a biscuit, mm -hmm. Since Jameson didn't make the cut, he decided to take Brittany up on her offer and came to the party. She apologized to Jameson for putting her foot in her mouth again, and the rest was just small talk. The owner of the club, Montana, made her way over to Brittany to let her know that she was pleased at how she packed the club out and told her that she can throw parties as often as she'd like. And we all know that clubs don't come without small-minded creeps. He walked over to Brittany and told her to watch out when hanging with Jameson because she just might get R-A-P-E-D. Of course, Jameson didn't like this too well, so he clocked him one across the face and gave his friend some too. Brittany and Raquel jumped on the stage and Raquel started singing to put the attention on them instead of on the brawl taking place on the floor. We see Malik at Caleb's gravesite and he's pouring liquor across the tombstone. Caleb shows up and he sings Happy D-Day to himself. Malik is letting him know that he knows what's real and what's not real. He told Caleb that he knows that he's not actually there with him. Caleb told him to stop acting like a B, toughen up and continue after the team ownership and not to let white billionaires kill his dream. The groundskeeper Charles caught him talking to Caleb's spirit and asked if he was okay. Malik said he didn't know if he was okay, but he was going to find out. And this is why Tasha was concerned because apparently Malik is crossing reality with the unseen world. Jameson is on a routine visit with his parole officer and he's of course a little bit upset because he didn't make the cut. And he's asking his parole officer about getting a waiver so that he can go to Canada and play for a Canadian team. The parole officer told him that his hands were tied and then he gave Jameson a cup for a urine sample and this is where we see Tasha coming into the parole office and she's there to get information on Jameson. Malik is now visiting his doctor to get an explanation for all of his anxiety and his visions that he's been having. He said that the marijuana is the only thing that helps. 
Malik thinks that he has CTC, but she said that there were no blood clots or anything abnormal, and she told him that his visions are stress-related and said that CTC could not be diagnosed. She said the only thing that she could do is refer him to a psychiatrist, but he's physically healthy, and she left the decision to him to play ball or not. And in the B-rolls, we see Jamison working out, pressing weight, when he lifts up in frustration and lets out this crippling yell. And I'd be pissed off too. I mean, it looks like everywhere he turns, he just can't get a break from what he did in the past. Tasha is on the phone with her little daughter and she apologized for not being able to make it to the tennis match, but she did promise that she'd be there the next time. And apparently the general may be right because it looks like there's trouble in paradise with her husband. He didn't want to talk to her because he told the daughter to tell Tasha that he wasn't at home. Brittany is at the club talking with Montana and she's playing hardball. She told Montana that she bought in pro athletes, top music talent, and doubled her bottom line. She also told her that her friend Raquel was her new house act and that she was done waiting tables. I guess Montana agreed to the deal on the table because she told her that she hates losing and that she better not mess this up. Malik is at the press conference where he's imaginarily joined by Caleb. Is that a word, imaginarily? I don't know, anyway. <laughs> He made the announcement that he was deferring team ownership for one year and was going to bring the city of Las Vegas its first championship. Caleb was very happy about that. Then we cut to Tasha giving Brittany advice on stealing from family and taking her kindness for weakness. Brittany thought she was going to take the easy way out by getting fired, but Tasha said instead she's going to work and earn her trust back and her parents' respect. Brittany sold champagne bottles for $800 in the club at Garrett's party, and apparently this is why she's in the bind that she's in because of stealing and breaking people's trust or both listen y'all let me say this tasha mack is something else like <laughs> raquel is such a great actress and no one else can actually play this role she is carrying the show and carrying it well uh she's doing an exceptionally phenomenal job i laughed through this entire next scene <laughs> but I'm gonna maintain my composure so I can tell y'all what happened. Tasha went to the club to let Jameson know that she's his new agent. And Jameson was in a bit of disbelief and rightly so because I'm sure he's thinking that no one would wanna work with him because of his arrest record. She said that Brittany, her assistant, thought that he deserved another chance and she didn't want him to let her down. She told Jameson to shake what his mama gave him. <laughs> And he turned around and she said, she gave you a lot, didn't she? Oh my God, this was so hilarious. <laughs> If you guys do not have Paramount Plus, like this is worth getting just to watch this show alone. This show is very good. It's hilarious. A lot of people said that, you know, they weren't going to watch the show because, you know, certain characters didn't return. But listen, they haven't missed a beat. It's, it's so funny. It's actually, it's, it's really good. It's really good. And I think they have a free trial because when I signed up, I had a, like a free week or something. Yeah. So go ahead and sign up. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. If you're a fan of the game, go ahead and sign up to the channel because I do videos like this all the time. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Ruthless TV and I'll see you on the next one.